with me today, I have Honorary Professor Paul Francis, who's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, the facilities management industry. Paul is an Honorary Professor in Facilities Management at the School of Construction Project Management at UCL, and Paul is going to be doing some lecturing on the NSC Diabam over the next year. So, good to see you, Paul. Could and you... <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about uh, what what is facilities management? Uh, it's uh, facility management is an industry that is probably misunderstood both by itself as well as the rest of the world. It ranges from the uh, boys and girls who deliver some window cleaning who think they do facility management, through to the great big globals who do facility management across a vast range of industries, countries, uh, uh, and types. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have its perfect identity. It has a lot of organizations that contribute to it, it has a lot of associations that are, uh, that are in it, uh, and importantly, it has an amazing plethora of people. It has an economic uh, contribution outside of its, probably of its understanding in terms of the volume, capacity of people, turnover, and ultimately, it's there to support other organizations to make them efficient and effective. Does that help? That helps greatly. That's, um, that's a nice, that's a quick summary of something that's, that's, that's very complicated, isn't it? Uh, but what's your personal role? What do you do? Um, personally, uh, in terms of a brief history, um, I qualified as a chartered surveyor. Um, I then went into industry where I worked for the mighty Pilkingtons running a manufacturing business. Uh, I then went into uh, running the Metropolitan Police Estate uh, in terms of the first time it had ever been outsourced, which is one of the major directions that facility management goes. Uh, as the commercial director at Security Corps, uh, where, so, and now currently I run uh, several large hundred million pound a year businesses, uh, along with an asset management business that looks after about 10 to 15 billion pounds worth of, of, of estate value. Uh, in addition to that, I'm also the chairman of Rochester Cathedral's Enterprise Board, which looks after there, and the privilege of being uh, a professor at UCL, where I try to share some of those experiences, knowledge, uh, and events, and make it understandable for, for people to work out why it works. And then you and I, Michael, also worked on the FM panel of the RICS for about eight years where we influenced the direction of our industry. So uh, that's what I bring to the party and the aim is to make sure that I share what happens and where it's going and then look to the future uh, because uh, that's the bright spark for everybody. That's the hope. That's terrific. Now, one thing for people watching today will be wondering what the RIS is all about. Could you tell us what it is? <laughs> I think even members of the RACS wonder what it's all about sometimes. <laughs> uh, so the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors is a venerable profession of some 170, 180 years. Uh, it's what uh, you and I and many others qualified as a breadth of professional experience, but all of it related to property. And maybe that's the easiest way. And we all then bring different disciplines to it. Does that help? We, we do, and it does. So tell us. And you're not allowed to talk about the there, but what's part of the uh, Without a shadow of doubt, the people. It doesn't matter which industry I've been in, which organization I'm attached to, or involved with, or uh, I have the privilege of leading. Everything is down to the people. It's the people who make it happen, it's the people who think about it, it's the people who innovate, it's the people that develop the software, it's the people that make things happen. It depends whether we've got people as, as we work together, we've had PhDs going through uh, our hands. It's about encouraging people to become masters of their profession and their industry. But all of them are motivated by this amazing plethora of ideas, thoughts, concepts. Everybody will be on the course for a different reason, but all of them will take something from you, me, and our fellow lecturers and we'll take it back to their place of work, their industry, their circumstances, be it gas, oil, education, hospitals, roads, the sewers, IT. It doesn't matter where you look, 
Um, it's the people that will make it happen and make it work. Of course, one of the great strengths of uh, our master's program, UCL, is that the research projects that are undertaken feed straight into the master's program. And you and I met some 15 plus years ago, I believe. It's the white hair that gives it away, Michael. It does indeed. It does indeed. Uh, but we've been working on research projects together for a long time now. Absolutely. And uh, those projects have not just changed the industry, but they've changed the program as well, the master's program, and they feed into it. Do you have a particular favorite program that we've done? Uh, <laughs> that's, almost, ah. <laughs> that's almost an unfair question. Um, the first one we did was sustainability. We then did one on condition-based maintenance. We've then done one on obsolescence. We've done one on BIM. We've got one on retrospective BIM. We've got one on um, the algorithms of movement around hospitals. Um, do I have a favorite? I think without, if, if I was to be fair, the condition-based maintenance broke ground. It really, we, we formed, we wedged parts of an industry that would never talk to each other and we made it happen and we proved that the financial and economic assumptions that we'd made three years later, we actually made them had realize and happen. Mm. Uh, and there is no greater proof ultimately of research than saying that the outcome is evidentially proven. Absolutely. So, so <laughs> You know, I probably would have chosen the same one. If you'll forgive me, I'll go with that one. I might, I might think about uh, another one later. But the, the thing, I agree with you completely. I think the, for those of us watching that are not familiar with the condition-based maintenance system, we have a system of monitors that are tied into various pieces of equipment in the building that uh, all fits in. And uh, it's, um, well, basically looks at things like the temperature, the, the vibration, the efficiency of the units, and we, we're sort of getting to the point where they, the systems themselves are telling us when they need some sort of attention. Right. Um, and that requires a little bit of knowledge to use it, and we would hope that it, we would be able to get it to a, a point where it would be usable by anybody at some point. And as you say, it's, um, it's an exciting piece of kit, to, to be working with, and uh, it's something that I hope so before you and I retire, we can we can bring forward a little bit more. But, a bit um, we uh, yeah, we won awards with these as well. I mean, you know, for people listening and watching, you know, these aren't just some sort of academic exercise. We've we've won awards with them. You know, nationally recognised awards, uh, as well as our organisation recognised by UCL. So. Yeah, there is a there's a track record attached to this as well, which is quite good. And of course, one of the companies in which you are a director was awarded a a, a small medium enterprise of the year award it's a few years ago now. But uh, UCL recognised the value of our partnership in the research that we do, and that that was a that was an interesting night. I'm sure, you remember it well. I remember very well what you. <laughs> Plastering a wall while everybody walked past in their dinner jackets. It was one of those like, which bit of this didn't we coordinate? So <laughs> um, a lot of people think that um, facilities management is about productivity in the workplace. Is that fair? Um, I think one of the one of the shortcomings of our industry is that it is focused predominantly on what is perceived to be the prima facie cost. So what is the cost of doing something and can we clean the carpets more effectively? Can we look after Legionella better? It doesn't take any cognizance of the fact that we can enhance the organization that we are supporting so that they are more efficient and effective. Uh, so is it so do we do maintenance in the evening rather than during the day? Do we manage our processes so that a director of the company doesn't go to jail for an environmental incident? Do we manage our operations so that there are no health and safety incidents, which means that there is no downtime, which means that if there's no downtime, the organization we're supporting doesn't have any losses attached to it. If you think about facility management on the oil rigs, imagine what happens if you stop the oil production or gas production. Imagine what happens if you haven't looked after the train properly. 
uh, and then it doesn't run? What is the impact on so many people? What happens if the ductwork in the hospital that we look after, Barts and Royal London, what happens if they can't have theatres open for operations because we didn't get the cleaning of the ductwork right or the filters? It's, it's this unseen industry which actually everybody else relies on to keep it functioning and working. And as long as we keep doing that and we keep it going, and then you've got the extremes of did we fly the flags the right way up? Was it the right flag and was it on the right pole? Who knows? Well, it's, um, it's certainly an interesting industry now. But what is it that drives you? And UCL has made you an, an honorary professor in recognition of the research work that you've, um, you've been involved in. But what is it that drives you to want to be involved in teaching, lecturing on a master's program at UCL? Well, first of all, um, I am very grateful to the university for a, a recognition of something that you and I have been doing for these 15 years, and we've been sharing knowledge. In terms of driving, uh, there are a couple of very well-known sayings. Um, not everybody is familiar, but Isaac Newton, who studied at Cambridge, declared that we stand on the shoulders of the giants so that we can see further into the distance. One of the privileges, I think, is that people like myself and some of our colleagues on the course who lecture is what we're imparting is this is our learning that we've been through. And it's to make sure that other people don't go back through the learning process, but go, as I've said in several lectures, go and make your own mistakes, but don't repeat ours. It's, uh, so the reason for doing it is, first of all, I think sharing knowledge is absolutely critical. We cannot harbor knowledge. Um, knowledge is not power. The, the, the cinema is wrong. Actually, shared knowledge is power. So the first thing is to impart what, what little I know, what the things that we've, this experience that we've got into sharing with people to look at things differently, look at them in a different light, look at them in a manner they might not have thought about. And how does that help them deliver to their organizations a better, efficient, more effective? And also for their man, for their workforce, it becomes as enjoyable uh, as the rest of us find it supporting industries that we've been around. And I've had enough industries to know that the criticality of what we do and the boys and girls that will be on the course will all go back with a different perspective, which will add value to the companies and organizations they work with. I think that's right. And I think one of the things that, interestingly, you and I probably share with Enthusiasm to find digital solutions in particular to the problems of the industry, the wider facilities and asset management industry. And isn't it interesting that while a large number of programs around the world are living in fear of this digital place that we find ourselves in now, being forced in a way to deliver our programs online. And yet for us, it's a challenge, it's a time of excitement. I'm excited to see what we can do Absolutely. online using Teams, using Zoom, using Blackboard, collaborate with all of the, the different tools that are available to us. Do you, do you, you share that? No, absolutely not. It's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> we should go back, go back to pen and paper. <laughs> um, I think the whole essence is that if we don't embrace technology, it will subsume us and then the land done to us. Yeah. What we have to do is take technology and go, uh, and I think sometimes it's the examples are that when we introduce condition-based maintenance, this is to very wise and sage mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. They saw us investing in them to take a, a manual operation into a digital operation using their knowledge, their skills, and we were enhancing their skill set. The outcome of that is that they produce far more data, which is converted into information which is then converted into efficiency and effectiveness. So actually, we've started to work across all of the workforces that instead of this being a threat, this is an amazing assistance to being able to provide a better, a better service, more efficient service, uh, more enjoyable. I mean, there's a whole variety of dynamics that could be attached to that. And I know that it sounds idealistic, except I've got workforces that I'm, that I'm doing this with, and I know that this is tangible. Or something else that the people who are watching this discussion online will not know, and that is that you and I could probably talk until 3, 4 a.m. And, and <laughs> there have been times when we, we've uh, done that. Done that. Um, 
so I, I, I want to end this just by asking you to tell us something about yourself that is not connected to the SMD. Tell us something that, uh, and not the cathedral. And not the cathedral. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I, I had the privilege uh, of playing a lot of sport. And when I decided that my knees were probably either going to need an operation or needed to do something different, I took up coaching. Uh, and I coached uh, a team uh, over four years to all England champions, all England losing finalists uh, one year, and then all England semi-finalists for the other two years. So I think I'm pretty good at knowing how to create and build teams in whatever environment I'm put into and sharing knowledge, experience, and fun attached to it. Well, Paul, it's been fun over the last... Uh 15 years being involved in class that you've taught in the physical world. Um, I'm excited to see how you and I will uh, translate our, yeah. our um, talks. You and me both. <laughs> absolutely. Um, into this online environment. Excited is the right word. Enthusiasm that you've shown today has been fantastic as always. And so thank you very much for all your time. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking with you, as always, Michael. Thank you very much. See, see you soon. Take care.